Welcome to Christian Fitness. Thank you for letting us come into your home, minister to you, and give you all kinds of great tips. We're honored that we can come in your home and be your home coach. So today we've got a great show. We've got um, a special guest, Matt from Nutritious, and we've got three great segments. We're gonna talk in the book of Luke about the woman that washed Jesus' feet. Amazing, amazing devotional. And of course, as Lori mentioned, Matt Tack from Nutritious is going to be joining us today. He's in our kitchen right now, but we're gonna to get to him after the devotional. But anyway, Matt is joining us today to explain Nutritious and how you can fuel your body and fuel your brain at the same time, both very important to us. And then he's going to give us our one minute workout for today. He's got his own special little workout that we asked him. We said, hey, if you only had one minute to work out, what would you do? So he brought a kettlebell with him today and he's gonna show us that one minute workout in just a few minutes, so stay tuned for that. But our devotional. Right, Jesus first all, always first. Yeah, first of all, we have to apologize for the audio problems and the video problems on this oh. devotional, but it was pollen season and Lori, oh anyway, it was gosh. just difficult and it was almost like hurricanes winds <laughs> while we're trying to shoot this. But anyway, it's yeah. the content we're concerned with, not as much exactly. about the audio issues and things. But anyway, enjoy this devotional. Luke 736 through 39, this is the Passion Translation. Afterward, Simeon, a Jewish religious leader, asked Jesus to his home for dinner. Jesus accepted the invitation. When he went to Simeon's home, he took his place at the table. In the neighborhood, there was an immoral woman of the streets known to all to be a prostitute. When she heard that Jesus was at Simeon's house, she took an exquisite flask made from alabaster, filled it with the most expensive perfume, went okay, right into the home of the Jewish religious leader, and in front so of this, all the like guests, one here, she we'll knelt over. at the feet of Jesus. Broken and weeping, she covered his feet with tears that fell from her face. She kept crying and drying his feet with her long hair. Over and over, she kissed Jesus' feet. Then, as an act of worship, she opened her flask and anointed his feet with her costly perfume. When Simeon saw what was happening, he thought, this man can't be a true prophet. If he were really a prophet, he would know what kind of sinful woman is touching him. Passion Translation has a footnote on the last line where it says Jesus would have known what sinful woman was touching him. Simeon thought Jesus should have known the sinfulness of the woman, but Simeon should have known the love of the one next to him who is ready to forgive and restore. Religion focuses on the sinfulness of a person, but faith sees the glory of the one who forgives and heals. I love this scripture because it depicts Jesus and how he sees people and how people see people. And I think the most important part of remembering when you see someone that is in, let's call it error, yes, it's, it's sinful or whatever it is, but they may be in error, but God forgives them. And I think about the woman that she is literally weeping in the presence of Jesus. She is in the glory of God and realizes her past life has been completely forgiven for everything that she's gone through. When you completely forgive and you love a person that you have been forgiven from, then you wanna do everything and anything you can or everything you can. You just, you want to do everything you can to show how much you love Christ, show your appreciation, but at the same time, you, there's such a sense of knowing what you've been forgiven from. And this is where she is. Simeon is looking at her, still how he sees her, how he perceives her, not understanding the forgiveness of God is so immense that you can't help but want to do anything you can to please God. And it's our faith that pleases God. And it's our love. We're supposed to love our neighbor, but what about loving God? We love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. I mean, it's just you love God. So she is literally reacting to how she's been forgiven. And I think that's a beautiful thing. We have to be so careful when we look at people to look at them in the eyes of Christ and not look at the things that have gone wrong 
because that's not discerning what God's doing. What God is doing and what God does is he forgives and he loves and he sets free. And that's what we recognize. We recognize the love of God, not recognize the errors of people. Because if that's the case, how are we a witness to the love of God to someone else if all we're doing is recognizing what they've done wrong? I love that Simeon is saying, well, Jesus can't be a prophet if he can't know that she's a immoral woman. You don't need to be a prophet to know that someone's immoral. <laughs> Anybody can recognize that. It does take a prophet, like Jesus said, to see their future, to see who they can be. Yes. That's a prophet, to be able to look at the future and say, no, here's how God sees this woman. I love Lori said that he looked at it as the way people saw her versus how Jesus sees her. And as Christians, we're supposed to be little Christ. That's what Christian means is right. to be a little Christ, to be like Christ. So we need to see people how Christ sees them. That is how they can be, how God sees them, not in their current circumstances. Um, I'm thankful that people didn't look at me in my current circumstances in the old days, but they saw potential and they saw what God could do in my life. And that's the encouragement we need to be to people is, you know what? God has a call for your life. God has a calling on your life. I see you, you know, doing this. I see you doing these things for God, not where you are right now. So don't stay stuck and don't see people where they are or where you think they're stuck. See them the way God sees them and the potential that they have. And that's what Jesus did with, even with all the disciples, the potential they had. Think about all the things the disciples did, said, and anyway, anyway, Jesus saw their potential and how they would shape the world with the gospel. And that's the way we need to see people is the way Jesus sees them. When you see people in the spirit of holiness and the spirit of love, in how God pours into you, then you literally are walking in the anointing. You're walking in the love of God. When you see everything as sin, that's almost being, let's say, carnally minded, sin minded, yeah. and that's a form of condemnation. So you have to ask God to help you. You have to ask him to help you see the way he wants you to see, to open your eyes so that you can see the realm of the spirit, which is the love of Christ. And I think that's the most important thing is looking unto Jesus in all things and walking beyond condemnation and sin. Because when you do that, when you walk in only a sin conscious, then you're always guilty. And you pose everyone else as always guilty. And you pose as not being redeemed when we've been redeemed from the sin and from the law. So we need to see people like Jesus sees them. I like that. So we're redeemed by the blood of the lamb. We're redeemed by what Jesus has done for us. And I take away from that as let's look at people always as God sees them. He sees us as a finished product. He doesn't see us where we are, where we were. The old is past, so we don't look at the past. It's too easy. It's very easy to look for wrong. But when you discern, discern what, what's God doing? because that's discernment. Discernment is what is God doing now, today, in the future? What is he doing? So look at people as what's God doing? He's working in them. The word works richly in us. So I, I take away from that is, how do we apply it? Today, look at people as how God sees them. Love them in Christ. That's how they come into the kingdom. Their potential. I mean, Everyone he's a potter. Is. <laughs> the yeah. clay is just a hump. You've got to mm -hmm. see the potential in that clay and that's the way we need to see people. So. Anyway, great devotional. Thanks for that, honey. <laughs> All right, time for our healthy living tip. And what better way than to talk about a healthy product that can fuel your body, fuel your brain. And Matt Tack has been kind enough to join us today from Nutritious. He is hey, the co-founder so of Nutritious. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna let him explain it. But first of all, I wanna talk about the, the mission. I love their mission, the mission statement for Nutritious. And here's basically what they're claiming. If we can put that up. <laughs> The mission statement. It's not a push button screen, that's for <laughs> it's sure. It's not a push button screen. To change the planet for providing you, the working athlete, with the highest quality daily nutrition to fuel your active lifestyle so that your human experience thrives. I love that. I love it because it goes right along with what we try to do here at Christian Fitness and get that human experience to thrive. Absolutely. You know, one thing that we always like to say is how are we protecting our temple? You know, and if we protect our temple, we're protecting uh, everything that goes in it. And as we treat ourselves, 
uh, as God wants us to treat ourselves, we can treat people, as the devotional yeah. said, with that much with that much more intent. Awesome. Well, explain some of your products. First of all, um, we don't talk about it a lot on the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, we encourage people to go for long, long walks, but we rarely talk about pre right. <laughs> and post. We talk and about stretching take, and all those yeah. things, but not the food portion of mm -hmm. that. And nutrients while you're in, especially yeah. in an endurance athlete of sorts. Um, so explain a little bit about, about Nutritious and what you guys offer and what it does for the body itself. Yeah, we just wanted to focus on fuel. So like, what is the fuel that we're providing and putting into our bodies on a really a daily basis and how we're optimizing that level of performance. So we started with the body and then how the brain interacts. Uh, so what we put in the nutrients within the pouches is specifically associated to that. So these are carb meant for carbohydrate pouches because the brain optimizes through glycogen release. Uh, so that's what you need in endurance activity. The body's trying to target how to think clearly and how to really optimize. So, and it needs that through carbohydrates. So we have the drive pouch. That's more of an intra-activity pouch. Okay. So as you're running long endurance or your intra-activity, I actually use it for tennis, pickleball. Uh, I know we don't want to say that, say that pickleball <laughs> name here, Laura, but um, we use it for any activity. It's not just endurance. So I'll use it for basketball activity. Oh, nice. I love playing basketball. Uh, so it's just to get the proper carbohydrate balance while I'm burning. Mm -hmm. um, and it's already broken down for us. So that's another big thing, right? I don't want to eat a whole food as I'm in the activity. I want something right. that can assist and help in that process. And then how we came up with the concept of fuel your brain, fuel your body, uh, was we added uh, adaptogens and nootropics into the pouches, which okay. are lion's mane and shiitake mushrooms. Um, those mushrooms are a neural activity is what lion's mane provides and cardiovasculars for the shiitake mushroom. And then for the uh, rejuvenate pouch, that's a little bit more caloric dense. Um, and after you get done with an activity, um, we put sweet potato, goji berry, tart cherry. I always say this is the closest thing you're gonna get to a whole food um, that is already broken down for you. But uh, the rejuvenate pouch is like that post activity of, I don't want to like load my body right. with something really heavy. I just want something that I can just quickly recover and get on with my day. Nice. And so it's a perfect pouch for that. So we um, are always asking our viewers to get up and move. I mean, that's why we do Christian fitness. I mean, we've been healed for a purpose and that's to be a testimony of what God's done in our lives. And we want everyone else to have that same testimony. God's working in them. But we ask them if not do anything, at least walk. So 10,000 steps a day, which is great. And that's what we encourage our viewers to do that amongst many other things. Are one of these helpful, let's say if somebody's decided I'm gonna walk 10,000 steps in all in one time, are one of these better than the other? Well, here's my point. It's a lot easier to take this with you than a banana. Yeah, a banana <laughs> might. <laughs> you know, you're gonna stick a banana in your- or You just what, have you to know, find a garbage Real kit. foods like you said. But man, yeah. these are great. Yeah. I've, I've you know, taken them personally and yeah, what a great, Great concept, great idea. I mean, great, they're just the packaging themselves, really Thank convenient. You. But anyway, so sorry, to answer Lori's question, I think you say. Yeah, so when you're on a walk, I always like encouraging, we're all based on longevity, right? right. I always try to, uh, I always preach this to any guys that come into our optimized program, whom we coach to, is really look at your 85 year old self. You know, all statistics mm -hmm. say we're gonna mm -hmm. live probably mm -hmm. into our 80s. Right. How do I reverse engineer that? And what 100. are the daily disciplines? 100. <laughs> so how do we reverse engineer that? And yeah. then it's health span over lifespan. Right. And so if we're walking, right, I always like where are we expressing what we call our VO2 max? Are we getting a little out of breath? I think that's the encouragement that right. I pursue. And that's where the drive come, pouch okay. comes in play. Um, we're doing the 10,000 steps. Maybe there's a like, you know, some arm right, twist right. in there to get the body moving so a little bit. So that will help fuel them when they're done, if they feel like they've run out of a little bit of fuel, either in the middle or at the end of it, that'll help fuel them for that. That's this one. That's the drive pouch, exactly. Okay. So it's just gonna aid in that process. What I always encourage too, is that when you're going into activity, sometimes you wanna stay light, you know? Right. You don't wanna eat something right. super right. heavy. Although in that 10 minute outside of like lunch or dinner, I think movement is extremely critical in that mm -hmm. process. We're always a big believer in habit stacking. So if you can move right after a dinner, that's great getting right. in steps. And we talk um, about going for long walks and doing light things so that the digestive system begins to really start working the way it should work, the way it was designed to work. Massively important. And so uh, if you're going into something where it's a training exercise, uh, we always say, hey, 
the dry pouch is a great utility mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. because it's going to give you your glycative supply that allows you to kind of keep pushing further. A lot of things that we target, you know, goo or other products that are made up of simple sugars, uh, typically they're gonna cut, create gastric issues over the long run right, or right. even- From the even, sugar. From yeah. the sugars, right. exactly. It's eating candy, right? I always mm -hmm. say sugar is bad. Sugar Surely. is really, really bad. <laughs> Don't do sugar. Unless Don't do sugar. Unless it's the sugar God made. So less is the sugar god made. Yeah, That's exactly yeah. what's in the drive and rejuvenate mm. pouches. It's all natural ingredients. Well, like That's I think awesome. most people understand that being dehydrated, so they know I need to stay hydrated, especially if right. I'm gonna be out in the sun, you know, in endurance or long walks and all that. Stay dehydrated or stay hydrated because as you get dehydrated, it affects the brain. I love that you're talking about okay, now a lack of nutrients or a depletion of your nutrients also affects the brain. So I love that you guys have hit that with that double approach. Absolutely. So electrolytes are always big and those typically, you know, that's something mm -hmm. you can add to water and get hydration in. Um, but your brain, your body is operating on nutrition as well. It's, mm -hmm. That's what it's burning. So your body always targets in a cardiovascular activity, glycative supply. And so this is a perfect way to get more glycogen in your body, those carbohydrates, those healthy carbohydrates that really improve that performance. You mentioned optimization. Tell us a little bit more about that, about how you guys plan that out. Yeah, so these are what I call optimizing pouch that, you know, so like they're functional. You can bring them many different places. In fact, you can actually bring them to the airport as well because they're under the 3.4 ounce requirement. Oh, they are. You can <laughs> stick them in your purse. So oh, cool. the, wow, you can take them with great. you. They're very mobile. Um, but optimization, you know, in my opinion, is how, uh, you know, we have the hours, our sleeping, our sleeping windows, and then we have our living windows, mm -hmm. right? And how are we optimizing those windows to get the most production out of our day? And movement needs to be, that's one of our pillars within Full Field is really movement is an extremely critical piece of that. And so optimization is how are we, how are we pro probably allocating uh, our focused areas for that movement that are ultimately going to make us successful maybe in our in our relationships in our work environments and everything across the board and and really in tune with our heavenly father as well um, so that's really what optimizing is to me nice. protecting that temple so we can think more clearly and that's why we're promoting these products ultimately to create that healthy living so that we nice. can connect with our maker what's neat is um, we have a friend that has a special needs child and their feeding can be extremely, you know, they're extremely picky about things they like and don't he like. Likes and them. He loves these things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you never know. Try them. <laughs> if you have a special needs child or, or a child that's extremely picky, you can even try it on that. But I thought that was Or if you're really going a, on your testimony. long, 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 long walks, like we're always promoting, doing, do, doing something. But if you're at least doing your 10,000 steps a day, this is something that's so easy to take with you. And when you're finished with it, it folds so flat, just put it back in your pocket when you find a garbage can, then you can throw it away. But I mean, these, I think these would be really, really helpful. And I like the fact that it's God sugar instead of just drinking something that you don't want to drink that's just heavy laden in sugar and then you have a crash from that because we don't, we're not proponents of sugar. And, and Matt isn't just about the co-founder of Nutritious. I mean, the Lord's really put it on his heart to just share his testimony, share his experiences and help people. I mean, that's really right. what this is all about. And that's why we had him on the show today, because that's what we're about. And he's about really helping people. And he's got about 8,000 different businesses that he runs. But <laughs> one of those is he's got a podcast called Full, it's hard for me to say, Full Fuel. Fueled. Tell us a little bit, what do you guys Say do on the podcast? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys do on the podcast? Yeah, we talk about our uh, six pillars. So we have a six pillars that we want to live by. Um, and we feel like that if you live within those six pillars, uh, as God intended us to live, uh, that you can live full fueled. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's cool behind that name is my partner really, we prayed on that. And uh, we were having a hard time coming up with the podcast name. And so he was driving over and he's like, dude, craziest thing happened. He's like, I just, I was like, God, this probably isn't important to you, but if you could just give me the name of our oh, podcast. And within seconds, he was downloaded with full field. So That's we awesome. go off the pillars, movement, fuel, sleep, mind, spirit, and work. And that's what it truly means to be fulfilled. That's, that's awesome. Nice. I love it because it sounds awesome like fulfilled. So if you want to live that's, a fulfilled yeah. life, you're going to live a full fueled life. So that's right. Man, yeah. I love that the that's Lord cool. put that on, on his heart and, and gave you guys that. Uh, but anyway, we encourage you. The website, of course, is nudeup.com. That's for nutritious. But then they have a million different social media sites. But go on there. You can look at all their old podcasts, you know, research from the past and, and just 
learn how to live a full fueled life. So what you guys have what? Facebook, Instagram, how many different I mean, social media sites? All of them. <laughs> if you find one, you'll find them all. That's right, so that's right. That's so our key. podcast is on Spotify and YouTube are okay. the main two areas okay. that you can find us on our podcast. Oh, but awesome. we'd love to have you join us on yeah. our journey with awesome, our podcast. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for imparting all of this to us. And we encourage you definitely, definitely go to newtup.com and try Nutritious. I personally really like this banana drive one. Um, so I actually, I do it pre-workout. Well, big during banana my workout, people. So that's, yeah. <laughs> Super I've tasty. had it for everything. Yeah. So it, Very yeah. low calorie too. Yeah, so, so you've awesome. got to keep those nutrients. You've got to fuel exactly. the body. That's so, so important. All right, well, we did ask Matt as our special guest today. We said, all right, we normally do the one minute workout and I always come up with these crazy workouts. <laughs> so we asked Matt, all right, Matt, we want you, if you had one minute to work out, you only had one minute to work out, what would you do? And that's a tough question for somebody that's, you know, as fit as he is. And you think, how do I scale my, you know, 45 minutes of basketball or whatever that I'm, you know, my four workouts today, how do I scale that into 60 seconds to optimize, speaking of optimization, to optimize the entire body in just 60 seconds. So I asked Matt, I said, Matt, what would you do? And of course he's got his now, we've got a full fueled podcast, one minute workout. Here's what he said. Here's what he told me. He said, I would do 20 kettlebell swings, 15 air squats, 10 push-ups, and five calf raises. I like the way it scales down, by the way, 20, 15, 10, five, so you're finishing a little bit easier. But he would start with kettlebell swings, then air squats, push-ups, and calf raises, all in one minute. That's an amazing full body workout, by That's the way. That's right. So awesome, awesome. So you're going to show us what <laughs> that looks yeah, first like. First of all, I wanted to explain to our viewers, because we don't use a lot of kettlebells. I'm right. not, I don't use them. I'm not familiar with them. So I asked Matt to bring one. And I want him to explain a little bit. So yeah, Matt, if why don't you run and grab your kettlebell yeah, and come absolutely. back over and we'll talk a little bit about the kettlebell swing. What is it? How does it work? Well, she brought like 400 pounds. I'm yep, not even gonna yep. try to lift that today. And if you don't use one, if you've never used one, do it right. Start low weight. Absolutely. And, yeah. Don't just go and get one of these. That's that's how no, you get injured. No, so absolutely. what would you, so for your one minute workout, what is the one kettlebell lift that you would do for this? You call it a kettlebell swing. What is yep. the one workout you would do for we, that? We call it a kettlebell swing, swing. And what I love about it, we have a small community in Tampa that we do on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Oh, cool. And what it is, it just, uh, the kettlebell moves the kinetic of the body pretty much head to toe. Um, so for a kettlebell swing, it's a lot in the hips. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll grab it by the horns here. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing is I'm layering up and I'm maximizing my glutes here, but I'm just picking it up and I'm swinging it between my legs and popping it up just like this. Okay. And so oh, this awesome. is a kettlebell swing right there. That's all. So it's a little squat in between, working the hips, working the thighs, full exactly. body. That's amazing. Hit, pushing those hips forward, getting those hip flexors extended and working those glutes. And if you don't have a kettlebell, you can use a dumbbell. If you've got, like Lori has an injured shoulder, she can just do a stretch. So right. the modification actually yeah. to that is very mm -hmm. lightweight. And you grab it by the horns and you just kick it up at a higher, at a, at a lower level. Got so it. you don't, you're not going to fully extend your shoulders. Um, so that's another way to modify Beautiful. it with lower weight. And then we jump into the air squats. Yep. Basically just have a seat. <laughs> have right? a seat. What I love about air squats is the deeper you can go is the better. So when you're coming down, you're moving your arms and you're just popping them up. Beautiful. Push-ups, pretty simple. Do pretty. you do any modifications or you're just doing a standard push-up? So for modification, I do push-ups. Um, and then uh, for somebody that needs a modification, I always say get down on those knees um, and just do a standard push up. Mm -hmm. And then of course calf raises. Calf raises, the only thing I like doing here is bringing my toes forward. Toes up first Toes and then up. Come into the calf and so raise. when I'm With or without weight? Uh, without weight is uh, something I do. Okay. I just like doing it throughout the day. Yeah. So it's trigger session. So I actually do one minute workouts all the time. <laughs> well, let's head back over. All right, so there's your one minute workout. Kettlebell swing, air squat, push up, Warm up, do you do a warm up before? Do you, because we always tell our viewers, warm up. And he that just, doesn't mean warm up that. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean warm up. That means warm up the body. Yeah, so like yeah. we'll say, walk in place, do stretching, do something, but get the body warmed up before you actually warm up on that. Exactly, so a lot of times, uh, actually how I like warming up is actually, I'll do things before the shower, but, and you know, it depends, but how, you know, the elasticity of someone's body, and, right. uh, the stability they have. But what I'll do is I'll actually do light air squats. I'll mm -hmm. come down, get my hips kind of opened up. I'll put my elbows out and just get them rotated. So I'm opening up my hips. Um, and then what I love doing is just swinging my arms, just mm -hmm. opening it up my arms, uh, just getting everything loose. 
uh, ready and prepared. It heats up that central nervous system and then allows me to do something in one minute. You so if you blood can't flow, do that, like that. <laughs> then do what Matt just showed us. Do these arm warm ups, do your air squats, mm -hmm. do whatever it is that, but get your body. If you can't do the bell work, and we know you may not have one of these, but you can do the other things he's Yeah, doing. if you don't have a kettlebell, yeah. grab a dumbbell. Yeah. You know, I can do the same thing that Matt was doing with the dumbbell. I can just grab it this way and I can just bring it up. Okay, right. so you don't necessarily have to have a kettlebell. If you don't even have a dumbbell, you can then just you do it with just... your arms. Just do a stretch, like he was just stretching his shoulders. Just Absolutely. do a stretch with him. All right, Matt, are you about ready for this? I am ready. Our one minute workout, kettlebell swing, um, air squat, push up, and calf raise. There we so, go. So hold on, we're gonna get our clock ready. We also have our fun little Christian fitness clock down there in the corner. And as soon as that thing starts, go ahead. There you oh, go, now good. you're only at 55 seconds. Clock. So he's gonna try to do 20. That's two, three, I'll help him out here, four. And how, how much weight do you lift? How much is that? 70 pounds, is it? 70 pounds, okay, that's like half my total weight. So he's, <laughs> he's lifting half my body weight, that's amazing. And he's gonna do all of this in one minute. And he's gonna jump into some air squats. You still got 35 seconds left, plenty of time. So he's gonna jump into 15 air squats. And at home, if you can't do 15, at least do one. <laughs> try to do five, try to do 10. Yeah. Do as much as you can. Yeah, we just did a show on Plenty it. Plenty of time, Matt. 22 seconds left. He's gonna do 10 push-ups. Nice flat back, perfect form. Still has 15 seconds left. Oh my goodness. And then he's got five calf raises. I like that he lifts the toes up first. I do too. That's, That's awesome. That's a great variation on just a standard calf lift. There you That's go, you got awesome. five seconds left. He can do whatever. Now he can just rest and breathe. Nice job, <laughs> man. So that is your one minute workout for today. That's awesome. So that's our full fueled podcast, one minute workout. Great, great job. And man, every body part, using every body part. So if you were doing this at home, would you maybe cycle, take a rest for 60 seconds, two minutes, or, and jump into another one? Or What we actually do within our program, so we call it the Optimizers Program, but you can see that I'm out of breath. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oh yeah. That was an actual workout. We call these trigger sessions. And uh, yeah, I probably would do two more of these. Um, but you can say that it takes me about a total of five minutes to do. That's and awesome. uh, they're great. And so the days we aren't doing our functional like training, that's 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. We'll do two two times a day. Awesome. That's awesome. We'll do something like this. Well, thank you so much for joining us, man. Blast having you yeah. on the show. It was such a pleasure. So good to be catching my breath. Hey, we always close our show with 3 John 1, 2. And this is actually something that we pray over you. It's not just scripture we're throwing out there. We actually pray this over you. And it is beloved. I pray that in all, all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Thank you so much for joining us today and try that one minute workout. Go We're love your neighbor it, today. So. Have a great <laughs> week. Kettlebell, 70 pounds. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs>